For those who do not know me, my name is Janelle Settle. I'm the founder and CEO of Dream Clouds Enterprise. And who is Dream Clouds? Well, this is what all brought you here today. We are a career coaching and business consulting company. So today we're focusing on our annual career coaching workshop. But a little bit more about Dream Clouds, we move off of our core values, which is love, vision, and pursuit. We are a faith-based company, so you can see here each core value does have a scriptural background as well to support it. Um, and the mission of Dream Clouds not only is to help everyone be able to identify what their dream career is, what it is that they're actually passionate about, and how they can turn this into a career for themselves. But most importantly, we do focus on mental health. So our goal as well is the fact that whoever you know is working their dream career, they also get to learn that doing the things that you love in life really does help your mental health. It really does make life purposeful life worth living, right? And then you get to find some excitement in the things that you're doing on today, okay? So what you'll see today, we have these three core values. We have love, vision, pursuit. Each one of them we're going to be discussing today within its own separate session. And we're going to be starting off with our first core value, which is love, with our co-host, Lady A. So Lady A, if you mind, please introduce yourself. Hello. Um, for those who already know me and those who are just um, get into the meet for the first time. My name is Arden Cook, also known as Lady A. I am a pastor. I've probably been ministering for about almost 30 years now. Um, I also am a co-host of a couple of podcasts. I am the mother of three beautiful children, two grandchildren. My whole passion in life and everything about my life is probably authenticity as well as passion. Um, the most part really being authentic, who you are, what you're created to be, what your purpose is in the earth. It is a thing where what is there to say in that says the day you're born, the two most of the moments of your life, the day you're born, and then the day you find out why you're here. Um, it's important, I believe, that you wander a little aimlessly until you really find what it is that you're supposed to be doing. So I, um, the name of my ministry is One Community. We were just worked out, so we will be celebrating our ministry anniversary in February. So I went about that, um, as well as I was co-pastor at New Life Ministry. So but basically, like I said, I love the big audience, but I love the one-on-one. -on -one. I love being able to be able to pour into people, minister to people, strengthen people, as well as be a direction as to say, hey, this is the possible way that you're supposed to be going. So very glad to be here. Appreciative to the Janelle and Dream Pass and the vision that is going forward. Thank you. I'm so used to when I hear the speak of and say amen. Next slide, please. So as mentioned, right now, Lady I are gonna start, well, Lady A and I are gonna be starting off with our first core value, which is talking about love. So a little bit more about love. What do we mean when we say love, when Dream Clouds is talking about the value of love in our careers, right? So for one thing, it, it means passion, your interest, your hobbies, it's something that we both also said, your purpose. So something to come into this world and find out what am I here to do? Why am I here? And that often goes into when you figure that out, it helps you to identify what kind of career you actually want to be able to pursue in life. So often your impact will be made through your career, right? There are plenty of other things, but she can say that she has seen her career within ministry. And plenty of other things that she also gets to do to help impact. And as well for myself, I realized that my impact, my purpose is here to push people into their, their moments of success, to be able to help them and guide them in any way they need by giving that support and assistance. And so that's something that I love to do. Love of God, right? The love of impacting people, speaking to people. You get to see those poured into our career today. And then also one question that we like to often mention is would you pay to do it? So oftentimes when we mention something about love, your passion and interest, they usually say that, you know, you love it if you pay to do it. Not just you are getting paid to do it, but will you pay to do it? So often I use the example of dance. So later on, we will be talking with Joy Wright and she is within the uh, performing arts and creative industry. But oftentimes I always say in a career of dance, you pay to do that. You're going to be taking classes, training for, you know, joy state. It might be going to school to get, you know, higher education within that. These are things that mean you're actually investing into it, right? You're investing into your career. Athletics is another one that you often see. There will be people who are going to be playing sports throughout the typical sports season. But if you really love football, more than likely you're playing all year round. 
If that's your career, that's what you want to do, you're paying to be a part of these programs, these clubs, etc. So that's just another way to say, you know, not only do I love it, but what I pay to do it lets you know that this is something I truly find is worth my time and it's worth my investment, right? The next thing that we also like to say is you can't let it go or you can't turn your back on it. So just for an example, something that I realized, I remember a part of my season where I was like in school and I'm trying to build a business and I'm doing all of these things and I was just like, I'm so tired. Um, and even when I needed a break, it was something about me that continued to just want to say, well, somebody's like, well, what do you enjoy doing? You know, take some even time and just use that. Uh, first thing I thought about was mentoring, right? So volunteering my time to go out and still help people. And that's when I realized that's something that I truly enjoy to do. I can't turn my back on it. No matter how tired I may be, no matter what else I might want to do within the day or time, I might try to isolate myself, but then realize, you know, I want to be around the people. I want to be able to impact people in any way that's possible. And then lastly, it makes you feel happy, successful, complete. So that is something that we're also going to be talking about is at the end of the day, when you're pursuing your dream career, you do want to feel that level of success, level of success, but as well that level of joy, right? So once again, making it a life worth living while you're here. Anything you'd like to add to that? So just right here, where you talk about you can't let it go or you can't turn your back on it. I like to say whatever your passion is or whatever it is that you desire for whatever your purpose or your destiny i would like to compare it to a boomerang i don't care how many times you throw it out there how many times you sort of say well i'm not going to do this i'm just going to go here many times we encounter i'm not sure if everybody's an entrepreneur and even pick something up a project or something that you desire to do and then you felt as though maybe it's not working the way that i thought it would or maybe it's not coming together and then you'd be like well i'm just gonna try this and then you go try something else but then you find yourself leaning back into the thing that you put down that you felt like was not successful or wasn't really coming together and then you may find another avenue to get it but you, it's the thing that you can't get away from it's the thing that no matter how much you try to veer off or even if you're making money doing something else and you seem successful it's still that desire that you still find yourself in that area where you're like but you know what maybe i should do this or maybe i should do this you just find different avenues it's a boomerang it's going to keep coming back into your life until you really full-fledged pick it up and run with it and then allow it to sort of been with you the way that it needs to carve you and shape you and mold you to the direction where you see that success that you're desiring, but um, it doesn't let go of you as much as you want. It, it's going to hold on to you and it's going to walk with you. So moving forward. Okay. So here we see that it says love. And you, how many of us know the movie Love Don't Cost a Thing? That's a cost thing. Lies, 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 they tell. Because love costs. Anything that you love, it's going to cost you. As she already said, I'm a minister. So I'm just going to give it. I mean, as much as God loved us, it cost him his only son to come full-fledged into the earth and present himself and sacrifice his life. So love does cost the thing. The thing that you desire to do, just because you believe, oh, I'm gifted at it, I'm good at it, I'm passionate at it, oh, I love it. Talk to you something you think, but I'm just enjoying it. There's gonna be good times. Like when I thought about being a speaker, probably far more than a minister at first, I thought I'm just gonna get in front of people and I'm just gonna have a good time. I'm gonna talk. But no, part of the course is actually studying my craft, studying my trade, researching, finding out exactly what it's gonna take for me to get to where I need to be. That's only one price. There's so many course, I want to say, and a lot of price that you have to pay, if you will, um, to get you where you need to be. And one of the things that it's going to cost you, it's going to cost you a sacrifice. There is no, there's no success without a sacrifice. And then when um, you sit down and you really weigh out what it is that you want to do, then you have to weigh out how bad you want to do it. And then you actually have to count the cost. How many of us have heard the saying, count the cost? Count the cost before you go out and do. Because it's a beautiful thing to say, I'm just going to get up there and I'm just going to do it and it's all going to fall together. But there are levels. And there are um, not only levels, but there are, I'm going to say grace that you have to actually go through. Nobody is just an overnight success. 
and nobody just automatically puts their hand. They're going to ask the Midas touch. Nobody. I don't care. Anybody that you look at that's still in the game right now, that's doing absolutely, you're looking at them like, oh my God, they're, they're, they're just doing it. I promise you, somewhere in the background, they made some sacrifices. Sometimes if you're married or if you're in a relationship, that sacrifice you have to make. You have to talk to your baby, your boo, your, 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 your partner, whoever, and say, listen, there's going to be some hours that I can't take you out to dinner. There's going to be some hours that I can't, you know, sit in your face and love you, love you all night long because there's a vision that we have to accomplish. There's some goals that we have to meet. So I'm going to have to sacrifice some of my time. Some of the things that I find very important, like maybe you know, fellowship, hanging out with the girls, that is my therapy. Big on therapy. Part of my therapy, my me time, my self time is getting with my girls, hanging out and having a nice time so we can laugh, we can talk, we can drink. We just have a good time. But sometimes I have to cut that off because what I'm sowing into means that I need it to reap the harvest later on. So I have to cut back. So I have to sacrifice some of the time that I would want to do that. Sacrifice some of the time that I want to watch TV. Some, sacrifice some of the time that I want to be on the phone. I want to play games or even social media. So there's the sacrifice. Also the sacrifice, unless you just have a million dollars and a, a whole flow and stream of income, you're going to sacrifice some things. Like maybe I can't do Starbucks five times this week. Maybe I can't buy that Gucci belt right now. Maybe I can't spend all this money on the thing that I find is therapeutic. Maybe, you know, if I like a glass of wine, maybe I can't buy a hundred dollar bottle this week. I gotta really do the bottle. Why? Because I'm sacrificing money to pour it into my vision, to pour it into my craft, and to pour it into the thing that I'm looking to succeed in later. So maybe I don't get to dress the way I want to now. Maybe I have to do it on a budget. But there's a long-term goal. Maybe years down the line, I'll be able to get that. But right now, if I need to produce, say maybe what I is material or merchandise, if I need to produce a certain amount of merchandise and it's going to cost me $500, guess what? $500 doesn't get to go to that this day. I have to put it towards what it is that I'm sewing. I read, me and the girls were talking, I was like, Master P, we all know who he is. He, um, he started, if you will, his empire on a $10,000 inheritance his grandfather passed he had 10 i mean we're talking multi 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 millionaire now but he only started with ten thousand dollars it was him he was already married and he already had room and he sacrificed that money he was destined so he thought to play basketball and in the process hurt himself so he couldn't go back to basketball so what he decided to do was take that $10,000, he was going to pay rent at a place, he said that was beat up, beat down, and he was willing, he compromised, he said, let's make a deal. If I fix this place up, will you let give me rent three months free? And he understood he could either get him a nice place to live in a nice car, or he could make a sacrifice and live in the back of that store with his wife and his child, sacrifice in order to build his empire. He understood, it's not going to be like this forever. It is what it is right now. So the sacrifices in which you have to make to be able to pursue your dream, and you yourself have to go down the list and find out what it is that, what you need to invest, what it's going to take, and then what you need to maybe put to the side and do that. The next is we understand love is going to cost some movement. Love is going to cost you to put some pedal to the metal and make some moves on a daily basis. When I look at some of the people who went out there and really went on the grind back in the day when we didn't have, I came up in the old school era where guys, even when they was trying to push their music, they would do it out of the back seat of a car out of the trunk of the car. I grew up when Red Alert was on the radio. So then, you know, y'all wasn't listening to streaming. We had WBLS. Do you know what I'm talking about? WBLN 98.7 FM, where they had to try to hustle and see somebody outside the door and say, hey, listen, my man, can you put this table? Can you go home? And can you listen to this? I don't know how many of us are so Kanye West's story, but if you saw it, he just kept pushing. He started with just making beat, but he kept trying to push his music, getting the JV. And a lot of doors were shut. They was like, oh, you the beat man. You're the music man, but it took action and it took confidence in yourself because you do hear a lot of no's, you do see a lot of shut, shut doors, you do see 
a part of discouragement, but you know what I like to believe? It's a part of the process. Because if it happened overnight, you're never going to sustain what you did not have to do grit, or sweat, blood, grit, all of that. If you never invested any of that in, when you get at the door, you'll never be able to sustain it. You have to remember on what it took to get from that, the sacrifice and those moves that you made, those no's that you heard, that constant knocking on the door, knock, knock, knock. I'm a firm believer. If you keep knocking, a door is going to open for you. It's inevitable. There's nothing that you put out there if you don't keep with it. It's going to come back to you. But it's about the action. It's the constant putting it in, sewing it, and sewing it, and sewing it, putting it in somebody's ear. After a while, if you're determined to meet somebody, and I believe in word action too, when I say that, keep speaking over your life, keep saying it, keep determining, keep speaking it. Keep, I say prophesy, you know, let me say manifest. Keep speaking it because it is part of your action because then you take on that. And I believe that as you keep putting it out there, it has to come back into you. It's like the lesson of sowing and reaping. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Whatever you put out there, it's bound to come back. Anybody that puts that seed in the ground and constantly waters, they're going to see a harvest. They're going to keep putting action. And as you look at a farmer, as he keeps putting it, there's a produce, a season where he gets to reap. It's the action that you take behind the closed doors. It's the action that you take when nobody's looking. It's the action that you take when the tears of frustration seem to overwhelm you. It's the action you take when somebody says, nah, I don't think it's good enough. I don't think it's going to sell. It's the action that you take when your family is like, it's cute, but like the next such and such. You know, it's the action that you keep taking and the sacrifice that you keep making that's going to position you where you're going to get in a position where you're going to see your dream, your passion, and everything that you have come to fruition. It's the action of not giving up, which brings me to my next point, is what you love takes the sacrifice, takes action, but if you love it enough, it won't fail. It will happen. It will come to pass. Any success story, which is what you and I are, not in the making, the day you get up and keep moving makes you a success. Your success story happens because you don't stop. Love has a power in it. And I'm, when you love somebody, there's nothing you won't do to get to that person. Um, not many of us. How many of us are parents? Me, you, parents. Parents understand when it comes to your children, there's no failure. Whatever they need, you're going to make sure that they get it. You're going to sacrifice everything and you're going to make sure that you do whatever you got to do to make sure that their life, that you give them the best life that they can possibly have. That's the love that's driving you. That's not, it's not because of what they've done. It's because of what you feel about it. That's the same way you are with your dream and your passion and your desire to thing, your talent that has been given to you. You love it. You're it. So it's going to work for you. It's not going to fail. It's going to, in the end, develop. And it may go through many cycles of changes. You know, when I, I said Joy is a dancer. So she may start out saying, I'm going to dance on a stage and millions of people are going to see me. The passion is the dance. It's not the stage or it's not the millions of people that particular way. The passion, the love is dancing, which never failed. So say the way doesn't go where she doesn't ever up on the stage. There's a million ways to do what it is that you love to do. A million ways. Some people don't actually get on the stage. They teach it. Some people don't teach it. They write about it. All I'm saying is that love never fails. The thing that you love is going to find a million ways in this earth to produce what it is that you want. It can't be stopped. You know what I'm saying? Can't stop, won't stop. That's love. It can't stop. It drives through every um, place of discouragement, every obstacle, every turn. Love conquers absolutely everything that you will ever encounter. Everything. So if you keep these in mind, um, you will succeed, and I believe all of us are successful just by being and investing in, because that's part of your sacrifices. It'll be anywhere today, but you sacrificed it um, to get poured into. And as a bonus, I just want to add, love also surrounds its people around itself with people who build them up. You are your first cheerleader. You speak to yourself every single day. I this. 
you can do this. But then you also surround yourself. They may not have the same talent as you. They may not be doing the same thing you do, but you surround yourself with people that will build you up. That you see them, and you'll be like, oh, you're doing your thing because they have that excitement. It ignites. So being even in an atmosphere like this of go-getters, entrepreneurs, people with dreams and vision, you surround yourself with it because that love that is coming out of you and the love that's coming out, it is contagious and it sparks. And out of the midst of it, you walk out of here going, you know what? Out of this. And it also, when you're feeling down, you get yourself in the midst of people who's hyped up. I guarantee you, when you leave out, you'll feel the same way too. You'll be like, okay, I'm ready to go on again. I'm ready to make another move. So love also is smart enough to surround itself with people who have that same. That was really good. And even before I add to something, I just wanted to let you guys know there is section. She said so many good things that it's definitely worth taking notes on, right? Uh, the last two pages of your workbook, is space for notes, okay? So I see some people writing, there are plenty of activities we're gonna get in, but feel free to go to the back and take some notes on whatever you said or whatever is being said. But I did wanna add, because it reminded me of a conversation that I actually had at a community a while back, and the question was, what was more important, passion or commitment, mm. right? And listening to you speak, you know, I was already in that time already saying that they really are just as equal because in these times, one is gonna drive the other. And so what you hear is when this love is sacrificed and it takes action, sometimes that passion feels as though it's dying. Right. Sometimes you get tired. Sometimes you don't know. She talked about parenthood, right? So I'm not a parent, but what I bet, I bet on it that there are times where your children will test that patience and that yes, passion. Damn. And now you're in a point where it's like it doesn't fail, but you know what? You're committed. She mentioned the relationship, right? There are going to be times where sometimes the passion is not what it might have been in the beginning, right? Where there are times where you just don't feel like it that day, where you might want your own alone time, but you realize you've made a commitment. The right. same thing applies to your career, right. right? There are going to be moments where there are days where you're tired, where you can't always see the end goal, right? We're going to get into vision and talking about that. And sometimes you can realize that vision sometimes can be lost. In all the midst of what's going on through the trials, through the tests and everything that you're doing, through the sacrifices that you had to make. And then what you realize is it's not just my passion, but the commitment to driving mm -hmm. there. So you definitely want to make sure that you have both. Mm -hmm. There's going to be days where your passion, where the love has to pour into the commitment. Right. Because you love it so much, you're going to continue to give into that commitment. And then there are going to be other days where the love is not as strong, but then you remind yourself, I can, I'm committed to this. I made a promise to myself. I made a promise to my kids, my family, my job, whatever the case may be. Maybe it's the community because you're impacting so many lives through whatever you're doing. You made a commitment to it. Mm -hmm. And so you want to make sure that you just continue to pour into both of those while you're actually going through these steps, right? So next slide, please. So just a little bit more quickly before we start to get actually into the activities that we have, but more on identifying the career for you. So what we're going to be doing through these activities, through the questionnaire that we have, is hopefully it's going to get your mind twisted. And if you're not already feeling as though you're living, you know, your dream career, maybe you're in it. So I like mentioned, a lot of us are entrepreneurs. Uh, a lot of us are in school right now, honestly, still pursuing into what we like to do with our career at the time. Um, so these are just different ways that you guys can start to think, okay, what is it that I need to do? Because it's not always easy finding out, right, what it is you should be doing. Like, finding your purpose, that's a hard question. What's your purpose? Like, it takes years and years, and I can even say I, I have an answer, but as I begin to even mature through dream clouds, I'm realizing, like, okay, there's so much more to me and my purpose here, and how do I identify that? It's by simply going through some of the questions we're going to talk about today, but here's some other things. So the first thing that we do is tell our story. So something that you're going to realize, I like also that you mentioned, right, of uh, the process. So when you talked about it's an action, right, those actions that are within the process, that's also the commitment. Um, and something Dream Cloud is big on right now is talking about the journey and embracing the journey, right? But when we realize the journey, which is oftentimes our life, our story, what we've been through, you begin to say, okay, this is something that I've noticed is a trend. This is something that really pulls on my heart because of what I've been through, right? So it can be something from childhood. It can be the life that you've lived, honestly, for I would say for a minister probably, you know, you think back and you look about your walk and then how God has come in and saved you. That's a story, right? And then that says something to like, hey, this is what this impacted me so much. 
I felt something in this and I want to be able to give that feeling that I had and got to the same to people out there as well, right? For me, going to find out that financial freedom, right? Looking for these opportunities, saying I'm an entrepreneur and I know that I can be. And for me, my story as well is being a black woman. So not only does Dream Clouds help entrepreneurs, but our target audience are minority owned businesses. So in that instance, it's saying, I want to help people like myself that I realized that there might've been some obstacles and opportunities that I've had and I couldn't have had in my position and I want to be able to provide that. So telling your story, realizing the things that you've been through, the good and the bad, they all count, right? And being able to identify what might be a career for myself. Something else that we also do, um, reflection on your personality, your skills, the reoccurrences in your life. So once again, those reoccurrences go back to your story things that you begin to see as a pattern. So it kind of almost goes back to you can't turn away from it. There's sometimes that no matter where you go, no matter what you try to do, you're going to start saying, like, why does this always happen to me? Like, there's something, like, I can honestly say, going out with Lydia, no matter where we go, there's always someone that's going to be drawn to her that just wants to talk about her life, <laughs> to vent, right, to just be open to her. And it's like, it don't, I always say, like, it doesn't matter where we go. That's a reoccurrence in her life. And it's, it begins to help her realize, okay, maybe there's something in me that means I should be pouring into people in that way, right? So just start to think about that. What are the patterns in your life that you realize to say, okay, this is important and I need to use this for who I am and what I'm going to be able to pour into the world. Something else as well, our personality assessments, career research. So a little bit of what we're going to be doing in our activities are much like this, but there are some typical ones that you may have heard um, I don't know, maybe online, maybe through classes and school, whatever the case may be. Uh, Myers-Briggs type indicator is a big one. Helps you to realize if you're an introvert, extrovert, you know, like what kind of activities you like to do, et cetera. Um, also the Holland's Hexagon. And then also I always advise career coaches, mentors. It doesn't always have to be a career coach, right? A mentor. I'm very, very big on advocating for mentorship. Yes allowing people to pour into you that you can speak to, you can bounce your ideas off of it. And they kind of guide you. Usually when you get connected to a mentor, there's somewhere in life where you would like to be. And I'm big on saying, you know, I like to have many mentors for all areas and aspects of my life, spiritual mentors, personal mentors, as far as just talking on a day-to-day -day thing in my life, professional mentors, so people who are somewhere in their career that I'd like to be that I can be able to give this advice. So sometimes it's hard for us to just see it ourselves, right? We get blocked by sight or vision. There are other things that are happening. We can't always know the answer, but having someone who's probably been there before, who's walked a bit of the journey that you've walked and who's actually been in a successful place that you're likely to be in, you want to be able to come and bounce ideas for them so they can help you and guide you through the way, right? You need that help. She's always also mentioned it, like surround yourself with support. Surround yourself with the people who are also going to say, you know what, we're in line. Um, I'm succeeding, you're succeeding, we're pushing each other. And that's a great reason to have a career coach or a mentor for me, academic advisor, because the times I was in school looking for a major to study, you know, trying to find out what's the right kind of career, what's the title for this role, et cetera. And next slide. Hey, man, I want to tell you your story real quick. Um, many times it's funny because it sounds like you're the one that's making the story, but your story is usually written up from the parents that you have. I believe nothing is an accident. Nothing happens by chance or circumstance. I believe the parents, good or bad, that you've had growing up, they were meant, they're part of your story and they were meant to be a part of your life because everything about your life helps to shape your form. It helps to create who you're supposed to be. It helps create your story. So actually, you're not the one. You're telling your story. It's just your experience. But your story is shaped by your experiences. And they help you unfold. So everything that you go to go through is supposed to uncover something about you. It's supposed to unveil something about you. It's supposed to be like a roadmap that helps you direct you in the way that you're supposed to go. So if you found yourself, maybe say growing up, that you were the one that was the black sheep or the rejected one. There's a story in that, but it's supposed to help you because maybe part of your life is to overcome that confidence, find the um, confidence within you, and then be that light to somebody else. Now, how you do that can be through many means. Maybe, you know, somebody said, well, you're going to, you never stop talking. That's because you were meant to talk on some platform. Um, coming up, I, I have a niece. Malia. Now, I grew up, I was the rebel, as they say. I don't agree, but that's what they say. And 
And that, a lot of that, you know, coming up, discipline was very hard. I don't know what it is, but discipline was very rough when I was coming up. And a lot of it was to drive that out of you, which was never supposed to be driven out of you. It was supposed to be taken shape. So when my niece came along, my son was like, I can't do that. I was like, to train her. In essence, don't take that out of her. Don't drive her. She needs that. Because many times in the process of our story being told, people don't know how to handle you. So then they try to change you and they try to revert, you know, and do all kinds of things, but allow who they are to shine through. Their personality is showing. Their talent, I mean, who they are is showing. Their gifts are showing. You know, you be like, ever since I was a little child, they love to put things together. It's already being told. We just get to read it. But I just want to say, when you take time, sit back, you can sort of pin through your life. Things that happen in your life that were helping you tell your story to help you get where you are. I always love to be able to maybe not, you know, cook, but what I love to do is feed people. There's a passion, and when I see people eat my food, I enjoy. So then there's something in that that's a part of your story that you then have to escalate, if you will, your authentic self. You have to escalate and come through it and find out what your story really is, what all the things that happen in your life, what story is it trying to tell so that you can eat fish it. Tell your story to the rest of the world. I like that. It's even as so as we were speaking, I thought about it. And like you said, sometimes it takes combing through the details and thinking the good and bad to find out. So I remember when I was a child growing up, I wanted to be a lawyer, right? That was my dream career. You can tell anybody it seems very fitting for me. Mm -hmm. I thought it was right on point. And all the way up until I say my junior year of high school, maybe, and I had an internship with a judge. And instantly I knew that's not my career. This is not it. One, I don't like this much reading. I like to read, but not on history and politics mm -hmm. and everything else. I was like, that's not my interest. Actually, that sounds kind of miserable for me. So I was like, let's cut that out. But also still trying to figure out, okay, then now I'm here going to getting ready for college applications and saying, well, what am I going to study? What am I going to do with my career? And I had to actually sit there and reflect and look back. And I was like, well, why, why do I want to be a lawyer? Right? So that was the number one question that we're going to be getting into even a little later on. But why? Why was it that I wanted to do that? What was it in? Then I realized I like representing the underrepresented, right? So even when it comes to dream clouds and we talk about minority owned businesses, I began to find that commonality of it's usually those who cannot always find the representation and the resources mm -hmm. that they need. I want to be that person that's going to be able to help them get there. But then I knew I wasn't going to be doing it for law. So then I could really sit back then and say, well, what is it that I'm going to do? How do I do it? How do I do my business? I have to look at my childhood and I realized, well, you know what? No matter what, I always try to make money through something. And it was going to soccer games and selling water bottles and snacks to make money. That was entrepreneurial, right? When I had a high school project, they were like, well, anything you like to do, anything. And the first thing I did, I made wristbands and I sold it. And I went through the whole nine and setting prices and because I loved math. So I was like, anything with number, how I can make this work and kind of tying it all in. That honestly helped me realize I should go to school for supply chain. So it was taking little things that I was like, this is, I really had fun doing it, right? And on top of that, it, it made means for what I needed in life at that time. So pulling through those, taking what didn't work with law, but what I did like, and then also looking back at my childhood activities and saying, well, I've always had fun, or these ideas always seem to come in a business form. And then I combine them together and say, okay, well, business is definitely my career, right? Now, digging this, I had to do a lot more reflection and a lot more to come up with dream clouds, but it helped me to realize I was moving somewhere in the business realm, in an entrepreneurial realm. I was able to take all of these things. So like you said, you really have to sometimes look at the good, the bad, and you got to take that fine tooth home and, and go through the details and figure out, okay, what is it? And as you said, we're going to talk a little bit later on, even the why that comes in to help you identify this is something that I should be doing. Okay, next slide, please. All right, and so with the time that we have left in our first session, we are going to open up to the first page of our workbook. This will be the first um, activity that we're doing today which is to help you identify your purpose, your dream career. We're gonna be creating our personal mission statement. So through that, we have about 15 questions. Now this activity, I wanna also encourage you guys, we're gonna be doing some activities quickly here, but this workbook is to go home with you. When you are alone, when you have your own time, we highly encourage you to sit and do it again, right? Take your time on them. They do say in this activity, I've given sources if you guys would like to read articles on them. They say to take about 30 to 60 seconds answering each question. And we say that because, you know, it's usually you want to go with kind of the first thing that comes to mind. 
usually means it really is close to your heart at that time, right? It's all in your heart. So with that being said, we are going to spend about 30 to 45 seconds going through these questions. And I want you guys to just, as I'm um, saying them out loud, think to whatever comes to mind, just jot it down. We're going to collect all this information in the end, and then at the um, end of it, we're going to do our personal mission statement. All right. So the first question that we have here is, what makes you smile? Activities, people, events, hobbies, projects, anything that comes to mind. Any and I'll just be giving some comments to help you guys think if needed, but he's also kind of giving you the silence of what you think makes you. Like I said, take about 30 seconds for each question. So the next question, I know we might still be thinking on the first one, but as mentioned, we kind of want to just write the first thing that comes to mind, and we'll see why later. So the second question are, what are your favorite things to do in the past, and what about now? As mentioned before, you know that childhood is also something that's very important. It's not just what we find in our lives now, but things that normally seem to grab us into us. And don't overthink it. It's almost like that first thing that can sort of comes with a ride where they really be like, that sounds silly, right? Because it helps to restore the people. So the third question we have is what activities make you lose track of time? So question three, that's something that we call slow state. We also have an activity in your work for that later, but once again, the flow state is really just, you're so immersed in that activity that when you're doing it, you don't even realize how long you've been doing it. You could be there for hours. For some people, it's cooking, right? If you get in the kitchen, you be cooking for hours, it's therapeutic. You don't even realize how much time has passed before you're like, wow, just enjoying it that much. You see the love is that strong. Fourth question is, what makes you feel great about yourself? Think about it when you're doing it, when you see it, when it's like, wow, that brings me joy. It makes me feel confident. It lets me know I'm doing something right. Fifth question is, who inspires you the most? Be anyone you know or do not know, it could be a celebrity, it could be family, your mother, your father. Um, it could be someone who's not here anymore, right? So just consider anyone you can think of that when you've seen them, when you speak to them, um, fulfill that passion as well. And then on top of thinking of who, what is it about them that inspires you? And you guys might have multiple people that you've written down as far as, you know, who inspires you. For each one of them, what is it about them? What qualities or traits about them um, really gets you going and really pushes you? Question six is, what are you naturally good at? Skills, abilities, gifts, you know, what's, what's your talent? We say naturally good at, we do know practice makes perfect. So for anyone who really wants to perfect the craft and make a career out of it, as we've already discussed, you know, it takes that extra commitment, that extra time, the action, the sacrifice, 
But when you look back and you're just like, even, you know, I think of my nephew, he's just naturally athletic. Doesn't matter what he tries at, honestly. It's usually great stuff. Right. I'm like, you do be good at it. So it's just like, no matter, you might be better at some sports than others, but you notice he's naturally good at sports. And that helps him realize, okay, I want to continue to push myself in sports. Some of us, me was mad. So I did all my tournament numbers. Question seven. What do people typically ask you for help with? I really like that question because I think that as far as a career, it's not for us, right? I always say you can't get anywhere without people, right? Success mm -hmm. takes people. So when you're thinking about the kind of people that you're helping, what they're usually asking you for help with, it helps you to realize this is something that I need to continue to be doing. Once again, we're going to keep saying, I can't get away from it. Anywhere I go, people are asking me for help on this. I just can't seem to get away from it. Right? Question eight, if you had to teach something, what would you teach? Question nine, what would you regret not fully doing, <clears throat> excuse me, being or having in your life? A little more time for that question. But I really don't know. I don't know. I had to give a little bit longer than the rest, right? So question 10. You are now 90 years old, sitting on a rocking chair outside the porch, feel the screen breeze gently brushing against your face. You're blissful and happy and pleased with the wonderful life you've been blessed with. So looking back at your life after 90 years of living, um, and all that you've achieved and acquired, all the relationship you've developed, what matters to you the most? Question 11 is what are your deepest values? Just for some example of values as far as what you can list. I know for myself, like I always say family, right? My spirituality, so my relationship with God, um, of people, honestly, my interest even may be a value that is deeply into the realm. Education. Um, what were some challenges, difficulties, and hardships you've overcome or are in the process of overcoming? Question 12. 
to add a few here. Give also a little bit more time for that to spread. So the 13th question, what causes do you, uh, do you strongly believe in that you strongly connect with? Fourteenth question is, if you could get a message across to a large group of people, who would those people be and what would your message be? The last question is given your talents, passions, and values, how could you use these resources to serve, to help, to contribute, whether that's the people, beings, causes, organizations, the environment, and it? And so now with those 15 questions, with the 15 responses, right? So once again, highly encourage you to take more time to go home, think it over. Honestly, even if it's not like you're changing your answer, you can take more time to really reflect on this, right? When you're looking back at your responses and you start to take all this information together, with the 15 responses you have, you would use this to create your personal mission. So of course, these, these responses, everything that you write down is personal. It's nothing that needs to be shared or said out loud, um, but it's something to just be reflected on. And as you gather all this information, what is a personal mission statement? It's hopefully there to help you identify, once again, what is your, what's your purpose, right? So a mission statement, as you guys know, with every business, they have a mission statement. What are they trying to get done? What are they trying to accomplish? It's really their why. Why are you here, right? What are you guys doing as a business, as a company? Same thing for us. Personal mission statement means why am I here? What's my mission on this earth? What is my purpose? What am I here to do? 
And the ways that you can gather this, once you take all 15 of these responses, when you start to put together your mission statement, you want to make sure that it answers these three questions listed here. Um, so this isn't all your packet, but you guys can feel free to write these three questions down in your notes so that when you are home and you're going over these responses and you're thinking about your personal mission statement, you want to make sure that it answers these three questions here. The first one is, what do I want to do? After looking at all of this and truly finding out what's close to my heart, the things that I love, um, what I'm passionate about, what I may feel my purpose is, what is it that I want to do with this, right? So that's number one. The second question is, who do I want to help? And you may realize that a lot of this seems like it's already answered in the 15 questions, but once again, you're gathering it all together to make it hopefully one clear sentence of who you are and what you're here to do on this earth. First one, what do I want to do? Second one, who do I want to help? So whatever I'm doing, who am I doing it for? And then the last question is, what's the result? What value will I create? So once again, I do understand that, you know, a personal mission statement, if you guys have something in mind, you're already writing away, that's good. You may need to really take the time to reflect on these 15 questions and say, you know what, I'm still thinking about it, but I'm glad I did this because it's helping me identify. You might even have to go back and tell your story to yourself all over again, right? Say what you've been through. Really actually think about those obstacles that you've run across that are not accident out here, right? The people that you're most close to and that you're like, hey, I definitely want to help. But there's the environment because it's not all these people, right? Some of us are... are very passionate about animals, and we want to continue to give back to that. Some of us are very passionate about our earth and the environment. Think about those things. Um, and then say, what's the value that I want to actually give to the world? So answering those three questions, you would write down your personal mission statement, and then that is to help you identify, okay, this is the career that I now have in mind that I'm going to go out and I'm going to push on and pursue, okay? And so even adding to the personal mission statement, that was the end of this activity, but there are some other things here for you guys that are going to help you in identifying more of your passions, your interests, and what you like to do. So on the next page, um, once again, in your free time, you can go through these three charts, right? So you break it down into three different groups, and you think about everything you're good at, you write down a list of that, and then everything you enjoy doing, because we do sometimes understand that we might enjoy something that we're not that good at. And that means maybe right now, right? So you're like, hey, I have fun at this. I really enjoy it. Um, I don't know. It just makes me happy at the time. And it's not to say that you're the best at it. You're the greatest at it. And you may not even be looking at it right now as like, it's something you can build a career out of. But you're like, you know what? When I do it, I, I enjoy it. And I'm happy with that. So that's a whole separate list as to everything you're good at. But also realize that things can combine, right? So you may be taking things in all three and realizing you're writing the same thing in each chart. And that's like definite go, go for it, right? And then the last one is everything that gives you a sense of purpose. And so even the last activity that you can do in um, your time as well is your flow state. So once again, that has been asked. It's more of like, you know, what is it that you do that you just completely lose track of time? When you're in it, you know, life feels good again. You're not thinking about all the stressful things that was on your mind when you might have first started it, et cetera. It can be plenty of different kinds of activities, um, but write it all down and then realize that these are your flow states. So all of these questions, once again, are to help you just say, okay, you know what? This is something I'm truly passionate about. And hopefully the answers make you turn back to a lot of the things that we said in the beginning. It's like, I can't turn away from this. You know, like, I, I'm truly willing to sacrifice for this. I'm willing to put in all my action for this, right? I'm going to make sure that everybody can see I love it because of what I do through it, right? I want to say that on the first page, that four and seven, somehow I keep thinking to somehow correlate, like, what people ask you to do or what people are drawn to you and then what you enjoy doing or you would love to do. Somehow, I think they have to correlate. Like if you desire to be a fashion designer, you want to, you know, be a fashion designer. You wanted to dress with it. You know, you want to make sure that, you know, people wore your clothes on the Grammys or whatever. 
somewhere somebody should be said, oh, you look nice. I like the way you put that together. Somehow the two, or they may come here and be like, if, can I put these two? Like somehow, even what you see or you find yourself gravitating to, somehow should be gravitating to you and should confirm. Everything about your life almost should confirm. Even how people deal with, you know, how they see you and your gifts, they should all confirm. They should all link up somehow, some way. To, it's like a beacon, point to point. This is it, this is it, this is it, do this. I like that. I will say why I was thinking about it. Um, for question number seven, the first thing I thought about was usually tutoring. I was the go-to, it's like, hey, she gets good grades, she's smart, I know who to ask, I'm gonna go to her, I'm gonna go to Chanel, I'm gonna ask for help. I don't know, I'm not doing good in English, I'm not doing good in math. Oh, I mean, literally always, up until college, I was still helping my roommates. And sometimes I would even get frustrated, like, I don't wanna help anymore. But when I think about question four, about what makes me feel great about myself, there was still no greater feeling when they came back to me and if I knew they were failing in the beginning and they were in jeopardy of maybe graduating or not getting a good grade, and they came back to me, you know, I did it. That made me feel good. That for me was like, this, this I need to keep doing it. I can never turn my back knowing, wow, I can really help people get to the next level of where they need to be. And that kind of came back to me and even realizing dream class, right? It was like one of those things where I'm like, they're always asking me for help in their goals of what they're trying to accomplish, whether it was good grades, or whether, you know, it's some kind of project they're out there doing. I was like, okay, I'm usually that person. We're like, well, what do you think about this? And where can you help? And then also, once again, it might have been a process. Sometimes we're like, oh, again. But then when I see the results for people, it was like, wow, I'm so happy I did that. It made me feel good about myself as well. So I really like how you said that. Four and seven, definitely at times, you know, correlate. You need to find your purpose, all right? And then so, one other thing is about the free. As I'm thinking about it, I was saying, you know, some of this should really list some of the things that you would do for free. And I was like, you know, no, no matter what you do, you're going to do it for free at one point. Even if it's a, a product that you're selling, and you're going to come out of your pocket. And most chances are, when you first come out of your pocket, you're not going to be able to do that. When you start your business or you start whatever your dream is or whatever your vision is, it's going to come out of your pocket. Then not even think um, part of mine is I want to be a philanthropist. I want to give money to people. Now, I don't have a lot and I do it. In my fact, I give it all the time. And most of it, I'm doing for free. Like there's nothing I get. And actually it puts me in a deficit a lot of times. But it goes back to the thing you're passionate about. You're willing to do that. You're willing to make sure that you, because there's something that you get, so you might not get the finances, but there's a satisfaction, there's a joy, there's an enjoyment, there's a peace, there's a love, there's something you're getting out of it that actually compensates for the money that you put out. And eventually, the money is going to catch up. It's going to overtake you. It's going to override. But in the beginning, you are going to be doing it for free. And in fact, you're probably going to a little bit go in debt some ways to fulfill your vision. But the thing that's going to keep it going is that you're going to just enjoy doing it.